Hi, Amy. How are you doing? Hi, sir. Yes, I'm all right. Thank you. How are you? Very good. Very good. So today, what do you want to do? I was just hoping to do um, a couple of like just random exam questions from various topics just to brush up on, you know, the topics. Don't want to forget anything. And uh, yeah, these are quite tricky, though. I did actually try some. So um, they're not like your standard. You know, when we go through like the Edexcel kind of um, questions, they're kind of like standard, straightforward, like especially the circle ones. They always go, what is the center? What is the radius? That kind. But these ones are a little bit, um, yeah, different. So I thought. Okay. So they are mixed up miscellaneous kind of examples yeah. which you need to figure out. OK, sure. That'd be interesting. And uh, that is always uh, how the examination paper is, right? That's true. <laughs> they have mixed up questions, right? So you can all share the screen. Now let's work on this. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. So can you please read the question? Yeah. So um, part A, given that the modulus of 2x minus 1 is less than 1, um, find the range of possible values of x. Okay. So you could solve it graphically or algebraically, right? Let's mm -hmm. try to interpret uh, this particular question. For modulus functions, I always prefer to sketch. Yes. And it becomes simpler, right? So we have 2x minus 1. That means I could really write this as, uh, let me just rewrite this particular function. Uh, modulus of 2x minus 1 less than 1, right? So mm -hmm. when is it 0? It is zero at x equals to half, correct? Yeah. It is zero at x equals to half. So you could think like this, that modulus of 2x minus 1 is actually defined as a function which is positive 2x minus 1, or it is negative of 2x minus 1. It is a piecewise function, right? Right. Positive when x is greater than or equal to, when is it zero? At half, it is zero, right? So it is mm -hmm. greater than or equal to half. But if it is less than or equal to half, then in that case, it flips over, right? Right. So basically, when you have a modulus function, it is a straight line with slope of two and y intercept at minus one. So it is a straight line like this. However, since it is a modulus function, this line is retained. This is what we say part. A of your thing, and the other part is flipped over. Do you see that? Yeah. So this is like the second leg of your piecewise function. And the point at which this happens, the vertex of this is at half. Is that making sense to you? Yeah. And clearly, if I put x equals to 0, I get 1 as my value, right? So this value is 1, correct? Yeah, because that one was minus 1. Yes. And now, mm -hmm. My inequality is basically absolute value of 2x minus 1 is less than 1. So basically, uh, it have, from the symmetry, I have moved half unit left. So I'll move half unit right. And so I'll be at 1, correct? Yeah. And therefore, from here itself, I can say that the value of x is between 0 and 1, correct? And 1, yeah. So that becomes my domain for the particular function. So given that 2x minus 1 is less than 1, find the range of possible values of x. So possible values of x is between 0 and 1, which I could see graphically, right? Yeah. The other way to do it is that you have to solve this inequality in two ways. One is that when I say, or you could do it in straightforward way, when we say 2x minus 1 is less than minus 1, that really means that 2x minus 1 is less than 1, but greater than minus 1. Do you get the idea? Yeah. So now you can add 1 to each side. So if you add 1 to each side, you get what? You get 0, 2x less than 2, right? So add 1 to each side. You get the idea, right? So we did mm -hmm. plus one here, we did plus one here, and we did plus one here. And yeah. now you divide by two, and now you divide by two. So when you divide by two, you get your result, which we earlier got as zero divided by two is zero, and x and two divided by two is one. Do you see that? Yeah. 
So algebraically, we get this answer very fast using double inequality. So what I used was double inequality. Double inequality. I could tell you the third way also of doing the same thing. Shall I tell you? Yes, please. Okay. I love to have multiple ways of doing things. So, so as a piecewise function, I can say that if x is greater than or equal to half, in that case, our inequality is 2x minus 1 is less than 1. However, mm. if x is less than half, in that case, Minus of 2x minus 1 is less than 1, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so these are the two piecewise functions, as you can see, when you redefine it in terms of a piecewise function. Now, if oh. you solve this portion, you get 2x is less than, taking 1 to the other side is 2. And you say x is less than 2 divided by 2 is 1. However, you are restricted to the interval, which is greater than half, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at this particular solution here, from half, we were looking at the right side. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Now the solution here is that less than one. So it gives you less than one means everything in between these two. Is it okay? Yeah. So that becomes uh, your solution, but definitely not equal to half because it has to be less than. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, on the other hand, what is happening here is that if I redraw, if I change the sign, it becomes 2x minus 1. If I multiply by minus, the sign changes. Is it okay? Oh, yeah. So that means 2x is greater than 0 or x is greater than 0. Right? zero. So within this interval, which is, well, I should include half on this side because it is greater than less than. And on this side, we are talking about x greater than zero, right? So it's from zero to, I mean, I mean, I want to make a open circle here. Undo, undo, undo. Okay. Till half, right? Open circle at half, zero to yeah. half, is that okay? So overall, you do get a solution, which is from, Zero, zero one. Is it okay now? Mm -hmm. So you could either do it graphically as I did earlier. So this is method number one, gives you a visual uh, look. Second, using inequality, right? As a double inequality. And third, you have uh, defined this as a piecewise function. Define as a piecewise. And then solve each piece. Then combining all the solutions, you get your total solution. All right. Yeah. So these are different ways of solving your inequality. Okay. That's really helpful, sir. Thank you. Because in case I like forget one of the methods, you have the other ones there to so help. There are many times when piecewise function may be better and graphical is very limited since you know you mm -hmm. cannot always get a correct answer. I mean accurate answer, right? Yeah, yeah. Graphically. Because it is a sketch at the end of the day. But it gives you an idea. Where does the answer lie? Right. You understand? So yeah, you have yeah. a good idea. That, you know, clearly it was known to us that, well, this is my answer, right? Between zero to one. So clear, right? Yeah. So for simple questions, that's not a bad idea. Okay. So we've done the part one. Uh, now, solve this equation, which is two to the power of x minus one equals to two to the power of x. Okay, well, this is independent of the first one, okay? Yeah. So, so the first one we got is the interval from uh, zero to one, is it okay? Mm -hmm. Now we'll solve the absolute function. Now, when you're talking about two to the power of x, it is always positive, correct? Exponent, positive. yeah. It is always positive, so basically, 2 to the power of x is a function, O, which is always positive. However, if I have 2 to the power of x minus 1, then see what is happening. If I have a 2 to the power of x minus 1, in that case, this line comes down, right? And it is this function. Do you see that? 
Hmm. And then it's the vertical asymptote, not vertical, horizontal asymptote, uh, y equals yeah. minus. So basically, when you do absolute value of this function, let me make a, a different color here. Then oh, this portion gets, uh, gets reflected. Do you see this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's and where I that to be Less than one. Do you see? We want that to be equal to 2 to the power of x, right? So, mm -hmm. so when you want that to be, and this is three times, so it is vertically stretched also. So clearly, we have a solution on either side. Do you see that? If you times that by three, does it go up like that? Yeah, so it, it, let me just draw another curve. Times up by three means basically it will go like this, right? Vertically stretched. Do you see that? Okay, yeah. So vertically stretched means you'll have, otherwise it was parallel. It won't give you answer on one side, right? Right. So, yeah. and this kind of like this, I mean, you see that <coughs> we get two answers, correct? One on the left side and one on the right hand side of this particular curve, correct? Yeah. So again, we could have solved this question using absolute function, piecewise function, right? Other thing which is very interesting to see is that if I square everything, correct? If I square everything, then uh, then also I can if have the same answer. Do you see that? If you square everything. Square both sides. Okay. If you square both sides, let us say the solution is x, x. Yeah. Then x squared, x squared is also a solution, correct? The solution oh, is the same. Yeah. X cubed, x cubed, like that. Anything. Okay. Do you get the idea? Yeah. So the, the absolute function, when I define as a piecewise function, let's say one part is, let's say, x, the other part is minus x, correct? Mm -hmm. If I square it, both becomes x squared, right? Oh, yeah. They become the same thing. So in such cases, squaring both sides help. Oh, so so it is not like both. cubing. So you could do piecewise function. Yeah. We could do like that, defining, redefining, and then finding answers on both the sides, correct? Yeah. We could do that for sure. But on the other hand, we could also do square both sides and solve. Right. So, and we expect two answers, we know, from this particular scenario. Is it okay? Right? Yeah. Because okay. from the graph. From the graph, yes. So, we can see. Yeah. if you want to really see, uh, you, you can actually do this uh, 2 to the power of x minus 1 absolute value could be defined as 2 to the power of x minus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 0, correct? Yeah. And it is minus of 2 to the power of x minus 1. Let me write plus 1 now. When x is less than 0, correct? Mm -hmm. You could define this as a piecewise function and then solve. You get the idea? Yeah, yeah. So I will do the solution both ways and show you how it really works, OK? So okay. could you give me more space to work with? Uh, pull this page. Let me clear this. Yeah, so that, you know, make this smaller so that I get more area to work. With. That'd be great. Perfect. Now, so let's redefine our function and we'll say, uh, let me do it here. We'll do two methods, right? So one, we are saying when X is greater than or equal to zero and when X is less than zero, right? So there are two pieces, correct? You've seen at zero, it is on either side, it changes the sign, correct? Right. Therefore, the absolute function negative will become positive. So on this side, I could write the equation as minus of 3 times 2 to the power of x minus 1 equals to 2 to the power of x, correct? Because on the left side piece is negative. It gets reflected on the y-axis. On the right-hand side, the equation is 3 times 2 to the power of x minus 1 equals to 2 to the power of x. You get the idea. All right. Yeah. So now you can open the bracket and simplify. So you get minus of 3 times 2 to the power of x plus 3 equals to 2 to the power of x. Bring 2 to the power of x together. So you get 
2 to the power of x plus 3 times 2 to the power of x is equal to, let's say, 3. And this is 4, 2 to the power of x equals to 3. So 2 to the power of x equals to 3 by 4. Is it OK? Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you can take log on both sides. So x log of 2 equals to log of 3 by 4, correct? Oh, yeah. And you get the value of x as log of 3 by 4 over log of 2. Is that OK? Yeah. On the right hand side, I'll do the same thing. Let me change the ink now. So it becomes 3 times 2 to the power of x minus 3 equals to 2 to the power of x. Mm -hmm. So that gives me 3, 2 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x equals to 3. So that is 2 to the power of x equals to 3. x log of 2 equals to log of 3, correct? Yeah, and then divide both. And x is equals to log of 3 <coughs> divided by log of 2. Is that OK? Yeah. So I got both my solutions. Uh, treating this as a piecewise function, which is actually a better approach. Okay. Now I'll also show you what happens when we square it, correct? So, so we now have three absolute value of two to the power of x minus one equals to two to the power of x. So I'm actually squaring both sides. You understand? You're squaring both sides. So here I get nine, mm -hmm. right? So three squared is nine, correct? And here I could write two to the power of x minus one whole square, correct? And this becomes two to the power of two x. Yeah. So this is nine times a square, which is two to the power of two x minus two ab. So two times two to the power of x plus one equals to two to the power of two x. Is that okay? Now let's bring all the terms together. Nine times two to the power of two x bringing this here minus two times two to the power of two x and then i'll write this nine times two is 18 times two to the power of x plus nine equals to zero make sense mm -hmm. so two to the power of two x uh, it becomes eight two to the power of two x minus 18 two to the power of x plus nine equals to zero. Now that becomes a quadratic equation, right? Oh, yeah. So, so we you can like substitute, let two to the power of two x equals. Yeah, we can substitute two to the power of two x as let us say some p, right? X. So we oh. get eight p squared minus 18 p plus oh, sorry, nine I mean, equals two to, to the power of x is p. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Two to the power of, okay, this is p squared and two to the power of x is p, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. So we get 8p squared. So 8 times 9 is 72, right? 72, and you want 18. Can you factor this? Mm -hmm. 72 and 18. Yeah. So 12 and 6. 8 and 9, right? And this and is six. like 3, 3. This is 4 and 2, right? So you say what? 6, uh, we want minus 18, right? 12 and minus 12 minus 6. Minus 12 minus 6 works very good. So you can factor this. What I'm trying to say here is that you can continue with this. 8p squared minus 12p minus 6p plus 9 equals to 0. So we can take 4p common <coughs> and you get 2p minus 3. And here we can take 3 common. We get 2p minus 3 equals to 0. So we get 2p minus 3 is common. And here we get 4p minus 3, correct? Equals to 0. Uh, 4p minus 3. And therefore, we get the value of p as equal to 3 over 2, right? And p as equals to 3 over 4, right? Right. And then you sub that back in. So p is like 2 to the power of x. Yeah, you sub it back in and then solve, and you'll get your answer. You get the idea. Right, yeah. Is again uh, two to the power of x is basically equals to three over two. 
and 2 to the power of x is equal to 3 over 4. Mm -hmm. We've got 3 only, right? So what we did wrong here. So 3 into 2 to the power of x minus 3 equals 2 to the power of x. And when I took away this, oh yeah, yeah I did a mistake here. Emmy. Mm -hmm. So 3 minus 2 to the power of x is 2 times 2 to the power of x. Hmm. Good. Do you see that? 3, three. times 2 to the power of x minus 2 to the power uh, of x, 2 times 2 to the power of x. Correct? So oh, because it looks like it's 3 minus 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. like 3 minus 2. <laughs> and I did it. See. What is it? 3 times? So 3 by 2. The right? one that, that's, that's why if you put it in brackets, yeah, it's hard yeah, to yeah, see yeah. that. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So log of 3 by 2 over log. So you <laughs> see we get the same answers here, correct? Same equation? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you see that uh, the first portion which I did without squaring uh, is very simple. If you can split it into a piecewise function, yeah. you can easily do it. Squaring is much longer. Correct. You get the same uh, answer though. So, so I when I did it, yeah, yeah. Um, I was just wondering, can you do it where you just, I took the, the you know, the three that's outside. I just divided it like by the other side and then followed through mm -hmm. by the piecewise way. It doesn't help. It doesn't help because you're introducing one by three, which is a very difficult number to work with. <laughs> one oh, by three right. is very difficult to work with. Yeah, you said avoid fractions at all costs. Yes. At the end, you get it. Now it's okay. I'm just taking log of three by four, right? You get my point. All throughout, I'm working with the uh, integers. Right, right. You get okay. So yeah, yeah. It's much, much better. I see. Mm -hmm. So I think you could adopt any of these two approaches. Both are good okay. enough to solve such questions. Give your answer to three significant figures. So when you calculate with logarithms, uh, then you write down your answers to three significant figures, okay? Right. So we yeah, have yeah. two answers. One is x is equals to log of 3 by 2 divided by log of 2. The other one is log of 3 by 4 divided by log of 2. Perfect. Yeah. I was just writing down the actual values. So one yeah. was um, 0 0.585, which was a 3 over 2 one. And then the other one was minus 0 0.415 to 3 yeah. SF. That's correct, because we expected one on the other side. Correct. So if you have to visualize it, so it was a thing like this, that the second graph, which is shifted one unit down, right? And mm -hmm. then reflected. So first we just draw the line, uh, uh, which is two to the power of X coming down, right? Like this, you see that? Yeah. And now actually speaking, you have to reflect this portion. So you get reflected and this is like this, is it okay? Yeah. And you want this line to be less than one, less than one. So you have these two points as your answer. You get the idea. Right. That is how you'll get your answer and you can visualize that this is perfectly fine. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay then. That's clear. Yeah. I think they have answers. We check them. Oh, sure, 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 sure. This is a, yeah, yeah, three by two and three by four, yeah. Mm. Got the same answer. Mm -hmm. Three by four. So they did one. your method of squaring it. Which one? Oh yeah. Or they have. I preferred the piecewise one though. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. So oh yes, this is also good enough because what they did was they did or plus minus two to the power of x instead of doing that piecewise function negative positive, you could make two to the power of x as positive negative. So this is even better. It gives you the same thing, right? You get the idea. Um, but isn't it that thing where, is it that thing where you say modulus of, um, no, modulus of something equals like four, and then it can also equal minus Plus four. Plus and minus four, yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I thought that's, you what, say I thought that's mod what's x, inside the Mod bracket. x equals to four, that means x is equal to plus or minus four, correct? Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. So in this case, we're saying mod of 2x minus 1 equals to 2x, to the power of x. So x must equal. Yeah. But my method, when I split into the two portions and tell you that it is from, when x is greater than 0, then it is 4. Do you understand? Yeah. But when x is less than 0, then it is minus 4. You understand? 
Yeah. Now, that helps in solving inequalities and many um, other questions. Now, this was just an equation, so it didn't really matter that much. Right, right. So, so you have to be careful. If it is an equation, you could definitely do like this, yes. I see. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That's great. So, can you summarize today's learnings? Yes, I can. So we started off by doing a modulus question um, where we had multiple approaches to it. So I wrote a couple down. So we've got the algebraic method, which was our usual like, kind of straightforward method that we always do. Um, but then I, I didn't know the other two. Actually, I, I didn't know the double inequality. So that one I haven't like ever used, which I should like start using because you did it in like two steps. So that was really quick. Um, and I really liked that method. Um, so it made a lot of sense. Um, and then the final method was um, using like as a piecewise function, which was the classic thing you would think about when you think modulus. But um, when we did that, especially for that question, it was, I think the best approach was the graphical method because mm. it, you can oh, clearly yeah. see, yeah, between zero and one. So I think, yeah, but that just depends on your preference values, and when you're doing values, it in yeah. the exam and the values, exactly. Because yeah. if they're like, like hard <laughs> values and like fractions and that, you wouldn't do it graphically. Okay. But yeah, so that was that um, question. And then <clears throat> with part B, we had the approach with the three outside and there was other like a multiple approaches again with the piecewise method mm. or squaring it. So squaring was longer, but we still ended up getting to All the good. answer. Squaring yeah. is longer, but definite answer. You get my point. Yeah, yeah. that's true. For equations, definite answer. Mm -hmm. yes. Because you can't go wrong because you're dealing with right. really good numbers. Whereas yeah. this one, it could be fractions and and don't do what I was going to do, which was divide it by three, because again, we're dealing with fractions. Yeah. yeah. Um, then we had the circle question, which Part C is the one that I kind of uh, got stuck on. It was just simply describing the fact that we want a constant radius because it's a circle, there's a symmetry, and an ellipse, which I didn't know what it meant before, but now I know it's the fact that um, you can have like- Major and axis. minor axis. Yeah, that, that. <laughs> and then it just looks more like an oval basically, and yeah. there's no constant radius. So you just need to say that. And then the final one was the proof question, which we've gone through multiple videos. It's just the fact yes. that this one, it just didn't, it, N, N was used instead of like two or something. So just that extra thought of saying, let N either be odd or even. So that's got where it. I got stuck. But got yeah, it. I understand it now. So thank Perfect. you. Sir. Perfect, that's good. So keep sharing these uh, brilliant questions and I hope many students will uh, benefit from this. Definitely. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, then. All the best. Have a great day. All right. Day. Bye, sir. And you. Bye. Thank you.